This is Shablam Hockey with your hosts, Peter Wojernoff and Paul Swinback. Welcome to Shablam Hockey, folks. I'm your host, Peter Wojernoff. You can find me on Twitter, at Russian98, and I'm with... Paul Zwambag. You can find me on Twitter at Zwambag, Z-W-A-M-B-A-G. How's it going, everybody? Peter, what's up? I'm excited. Who's not excited? This is it, folks. This is our playoff preview show, so it's going to be a good one. I'm going to talk about me being a pansy first, right, Paul? Yeah, so I hear. So, Yeah, so you know, Paul knows, a few people might know out there, I have my own playoff pool. I work very hard on it. I don't keep any money because there's a very few, a little bit of money. I just do it for fun so everybody enjoys it. I'm working hard. I'm setting everything up, making the website. It's all from scratch. And I have awards too, which I like to do, so then people can vote on separate awards because I don't like some of the NHL awards. I like, like in my hockey pool, we have the most improved award, uh, like player in the, on the ice. Um, how about best defensive defenseman that kind of stuff so i like doing that and we kind of wanted to do it on google for the voting uh using the google sheets and stuff and my computer that's the main thing my computer has been acting up like crazy the last few weeks really annoying every time i try to work on my excel sheet and stuff like that it's been freezing and i try to save it and it doesn't save that's been killing me so then when i sent out the awards obviously some of them some of the players were from like last year because it wasn't fully updated and i noticed that the last second i was like oh and people already started voting and that really made me want to cry in a corner yeah you were ready to just quit the whole playoff <laughs> pool everything you were like nope done going home see you later don't want to talk <laughs> about it i was like yeah. whoa peter just send it out again like we're all no, we we're all grown men. We can we can choose, and maybe women, this but we is can where choose. Grown men come to have crazy emotions. It's when it's a, especially Canadian men in a hot in a fantasy pool in a playoff one, especially. It's there's a big demand. I feel like this is like probably when an, an episode from the league or something. Uh, <laughs> I was like, no, this is ridiculous. Ah, I was about to throw the freaking computer out the window. Yeah, you sounded like it when you sent out the email saying, it's over, <laughs> done. Anybody that voted, sorry for voting, but we're not doing it anymore. It was like, I sent one back real quick. Like, I, I did fill it out, and <laughs> oh, you can, you as can soon redo as I it. That, I was out the door. I went for a long walk. Jeez. I went for a half an hour walk. Jeez. <laughs> All right. So out of me going insane, uh, later on in the show... We are going to be talking about fantasy playoff picks, our ideas, uh, recommendations, and what we think are good moves. Uh, we're also going to be in the middle of the show. We're going to be talking about the brackets, who we think are going to win the series, and who's going to go the distance. And first up, we have is the matchups. Let's break down the matchups, what we like, what series we like. Let's get into it, Paul. All right, where are we going to start? Let's go. You know, let's go with the East. We're in the East. Let's go with the East. We'll start right at the top, the Atlantic Division. A1, Florida Panthers versus W Wildcard, WC2. Uh, wildcard position two, or the higher one. It's so hard when they do that, right? But anyways, um, Florida versus the Islanders. Before we get into this, though, you know what? When we're coinciding with everything with fantasy drafts and brackets... I really don't like this new format. Do you like it, Paul? I do, because then you can just, when you're filling out a full bracket, you just yeah. fill out the full bracket, just like yeah. the NCAA and stuff like that. I know that, but I don't like it because I liked the chance of, you know, an underdog seven, and then they win, and then they have to go against the number one team. So for the for the actual teams, it's advantage to be higher, right? This is true. Because So then you're playing against the lowest team always. And this way, there's a very good chance you're, you know, you might be stuck with, you know, playing against your own division and a team and a rivalry, which you always lose in. And that also annoys me a bit. And then again, when it comes to the fantasy picking, it bothers me because I make it, it's, in my opinion, it makes it feel like it's a little easier, you know? 
because then if there's a, if you're playing within the brackets, you know, there's no chance that, you know, weird matchups can happen. You know, it's not going to be, it's not going to mix up, right, in the next round. Yeah. So I think that makes it a lot easier. And I like that per chance that anything random could happen in the second round. You know, any anybody can play anybody pretty much, right? Yeah, and it is kind of nice when you, like, if you just did the first round picks and then you got a chance to try again and get the second round because once your bracket's busted, it's yep. going to take away a lot of not the diehard fans, the ones that are more into it for, like, watching their bracket and stuff like that. So it does kind of suck that way where they can't just restart from the second round and jump on another bandwagon and pick the next round series. Yep. But yep. So I guess I could see the, the where their, your point is, yeah. I might be better that way, but I guess this is the yep. way they're doing it, and it it's going to come to fruition on one of the matchups where I just think it's going to be the worst hockey games ever. Yeah. But we'll get to it, so... Uh, well, yeah, because they're... They're, the good, the thing re, the reason why I think the NHL went, went with this way more is because of the matchups and you're going to get more hate because you're playing within your division other than the wild card teams, right? Yeah, and it's more likely that the every division is going to have a representative in the conference finals, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like there's only one Atlantic team or one Metro team in the Atlantic brackets. Yeah. So Yeah, you know, all right. You know, Teams can pull it out. So let's get into it. Florida yeah. versus the Islanders. What big, do you have here, Paul? Big news. Capiano says Halak is out for the se- the series. So yeah, yeah. Ken Thomas Ken Thomas Grice carry this team? That's going to be a big question. Or maybe Barube might have to play. You yeah, know, I Berube, wouldn't be yeah. surprised seeing him. And just because I have pretty much the Panthers winning this in six games, just because they don't have that much experience. I might have gone less games, but they don't have much experience, so I might think I think they're going to take them to six games uh, because Islanders have just been, I don't know, they've just lost their game nearing the middle of the season. They've kind of lost it, and now with Halak out, and I said this before, even though your backup might not be, it might be still a really good goalie, the team in front of him, does, they're not used to him being back there. They don't have the confidence or the faith in that goalie. Just like Carey Price, when he went out, Condon wasn't bad. It's just that they lost the faith in their goaltender. They lost the confidence, so they started playing really poorly. I say the same thing is happening to the Islanders, and that's why I'm picking the Panthers for an easy series win. Well, and it's going to have to be Grice, just looking at the injury report. Uh, Baribe has got a lower body. He skated on yep. Thursday, but he didn't take any shots, so yeah. it's got to be Grice, and they don't really have anybody else that can sit in the net. So if he gets shelled the first game, that's going to be interesting. And like Travis Hamnick is maybe yep. day, he's day to day, so he that's going to hurt the back end. Yeah, for sure. And Anders Lee is out. There's a depth guy out for the yep. rest of the season. So, but the Panthers, the X factor, as I like to call him, Vincent Trocheck is also injured for them. I was actually thinking about maybe taking Trocek as my late sleeper pick, but he probably won't play if, at least maybe a few games as well for them. And they even, I think, the, I'm not sure if it was the coach, I believe it was the coach, but he said, Vincent Trocek is our team, pretty much. He said that a few weeks ago. Interesting. And he's like, he's the, he said like he's the MVP of our team. So that's pretty cool to say about the young kid uh, who's playing pretty good on their you know second and third line. So, but yeah, uh, what did you what did you have for this series? Uh, I'm taking the Panthers in five. I think they're gonna yep. easily get by the Islanders. All right, that's our picks for that series. Let's move on. A two is Tampa Bay Lightning, and Atlantic third position is the Detroit Red Wings. You know, I Tampa is just decimated with injuries, on top of Stamkos and Strollman pretty much out of the entire playoffs, they've got a lot of banged up players. I think Kucherov is going to play, but apparently he has like, he's playing like with a broken foot. Jeez. Johnson's day to day. They've got other guys that are banged up. Yeah. And Hedman sat out the last couple of games with uh injury as well. So they're, they're looking tough. Losing Anton Strollman is, is really big. Like, yeah, that's yeah. going to hurt them. And They're then they in. lost Stamkos like days later, and that 
that's bad. Like this matchup, this is a this is what I was saying earlier that we were going to get to. This is the worst matchup of the first round. Because Detroit fell into the playoffs. They were losing games. Yeah. You know? They were playing pretty good midseason. They were doing all right. They were up there. They were in. But then they started losing and losing and losing. And then they just caught in to the playoffs because the Bruins were that much worse. Yeah. And they're they're a minus 13 goal differential. So they've given up 13 more goals than they've scored. So that's, that's not good. These two teams are ranked 12th and 15th in the league. And they're going up against each other in the first round. How does that yeah. seem fair? Yeah, it's... Paul, I wanted... I'm going to talk about it in, uh, before the brackets, but I wanted Philly, that was my underdog sleeper pick, to fall in and maybe try to catch uh, the Panthers, maybe, to take out this, you know, th- this group kind of thing. Yeah. You know, I thought they have a good playoff type team and they're playing really well right now. They could have beat this Atlantic group, in my opinion. Oh, you yeah. Know, so, yeah. Uh, for this series, it's it's a toss up for me, it's in the air but I'm going to go with Detroit in seven. All right. What do you got, Paul? Uh, I'm kind of shaky on the Detroit goaltending, and Ben Bishop could steal a couple games, yeah. but I'm I'm going with the Red Wings in five. So wow. I think Ben Bishop will steal one, but I just think the Red Wings veterans will show up. Datsuk's talk of uh, ending his NHL career at the end of this yeah. season might have a little jump for all these Red Wings, and, and they want to prove that 25 straight, playoff seasons that they they deserve to be here so and tampa bay beat detroit last year right yes they did so so this is revenge time yeah it'll be interesting who they they start in net mrazic or howard i think howard has the net for now yeah but i'm not entirely sure i've been playing him more lately yeah all right we'll get back to atlantic division let's go to the metro now the president's trophy winners washington capitals the favorite Versus wild card team number one or two. What is that again? I don't know. I'm lost with the whole wild card thing. Who's who? But they're playing the Flyers. Yeah, so they're wild card two because they are wild card two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they're the bottom one. All right. So yes, uh, the Metro number one versus the wild card two, the Flyers. How could the Capitals lose this series, Paul? If they keep playing the way they did for the past two two weeks. They keep playing the way they've done since December, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> by Backstrom's <laughs> comments. Yeah. That's, um, that's a little ridiculous, so, but Philadelphia's playing good hockey their past, like, 20 games. They've really turned yeah. it on. They were way out of the playoffs at one point. Yeah. So this, this is a scary matchup for the Capitals. I'm sure they're not happy that they're facing Philly and not the, the Islanders. Yeah, it's... It's going to be an emotional one. This is going to be a good series to watch, folks, just because the way Philly's playing right now and the way they play in the playoffs versus the number one contender for the Cup. This is a very good series. I had, like I said before, Philly was my underdog pick. I wanted to pick them. But Caps are my favorite to win the whole conference. It's I'm in a predicament. I'm in a catch-22 right now with these two teams. Still feeling the Caps more, but you know what? I'm going to go with Caps in seven for this series. Wow. I'm going to go Flyers in seven. Wow. I think yeah, they it's... can they can pull it off. There's All the pressure is on the Capitals. The Flyers yep. are playing with house money. They are just out there to make some upsets. And the whole Ed Schneider passing away, their, their owner, their longtime owner, their original yep. owner, he just passed away. So yeah, for, yeah. that's going to be in their hearts big time. So I'm I'm going with uh, the Flyers for sure that's a good pick Paul I like that pick I'm going to go with the favorite same thing taking it to 7 the Caps just have too much depth now when you have a guy like Kuznetsov on the second line you have game 7 Justin Williams you have a full defensive core now filled in with guys like Niskin and on top of your Alsner and your Carlson they have a very good all around team and again it's the best goalie in the NHL in the last two years, Braden Holby. And he showed in the playoffs in the last few, the last few years. He's still good in the playoffs as well. Yeah. If, Can if, Mason stop the Capitals' offense? That's the problem there. Yeah. And I don't think the Flyers' defense or Mason can stop them. See, so. I think if it goes to seven games, Philly's got it. I think yeah. if Washington wins, they got to get it before seven. Because if, 
it goes to seven and they have to go back home. And Are you telling me that Justin Williams will not score a game seven goal, Paul? Are you telling me that? Not in the first round, no. So, not at all. Well, I'm picking the, the Flyers. So. <laughs> so those are our picks for that series. Let's go on to your team, Paul. The Metro team number two, the Pittsburgh Penguins versus Metro team number three, the New York Rangers. Paul, when was the last time Pittsburgh Penguins lost? Or at least two games? Was it like 2007 or something? Yeah, they're they're playing really, really good hockey. The last 10, they're 8-2-0, and so... They lost a, a terrible game against the Flyers, uh, the last game, but they oh, okay, okay. They really they didn't. The end, at the end? They played really good. They played really yeah. good hockey, but you could just tell they were just going through yeah. the paces. They uh, There was nothing to play for. Like It would have been nice to knock out the Flyers, but they weren't actually technically going to knock them out if they won, so I don't think that really played any part of it. And Yeah, the Penguins are looking awesome. Like. They, that second line right now is clicking. The picks, This is the same Pittsburgh Penguins, the string, same strong team you've seen for the last few years, but now they have added second good scoring in Phil Kessel. A good second line, what, you know? And Malkin's not even playing. Paul, when is Malkin coming back? He's rumored to be back first game, so... Wow. And if he's back, do you stick him with Sydney then? That That's what I would do. I would go... Crosby with Hornquist and Malkin, or Crosby with Hornquist, or Crosby and Malkin and and Kunitz. I would stick Crosby and Malkin and flip through those those two wingers, because the because Kunitz and Hornquist can play third line minutes for yeah. sure, and still yeah. be a factor. So that would be awesome because I don't think you should break up the Benino Kessel Haglin line whatsoever. Yep, yeah. yeah, exactly. And and if Malkin doesn't come back first couple games, then I, I'm not even that worried about it. Like, they give him time. Like, if he's not ready to come back, don't have him come back at 70% and take Benino's spot. Like, with that line clicking that well, if Malkin needs a couple games, then I think they have to give it to him. Yeah. And if people don't know who he is, his name is Oli Mata, folks. Check him out in this series. He's looking, I would say, under the radar. He's going to be solid in this series, and you're going to probably see it. And this is these are guys, like, now that he has more experience and adding a Kessel and now a good second line playing well, the, Pets, Pe, uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins actually look like a really good team and a pick to go fur, further this year. Yeah, the only scary thing is our goaltending. Fleury got another concussion uh, yeah. six, six games ago, I think, or five games, and Matt is Murray he, had a head injury. So, Is he available then? They're saying he's day to day still, but yeah, he he got he interviewed with uh, can't think of who it was, can't think of who it was, but one of the the Pittsburgh writers and the Pittsburgh writer was like he's definitely lying that he's a hundred percent, so he's not one hundred percent. But my dad picked him just because he couldn't get the one or two goalies he couldn't get, and that was his third pick, and he picked him at the end, obviously. My dad's a big flurry. He likes Pittsburgh. So. Yeah, I think that's a the, the great move. If you can get him near the end of your playoff pool because everybody's worried about if he's yeah. hurt or not. As, if he comes back at, in game three or four and Murray stole the first three games, I'm yeah. pretty sure they're playing flurry. Yeah. If he's 100%. But if they're up 3 nothing, let Murray finish the series and start flurry the second Next round. series. Yeah. Yeah. So. Lundqvist, how many games will he steal in this series? Oh, man. That's he, the only way the Rangers can win the series, right? Yeah. I didn't know this, Paul. Ryan McDonough is injured. Yeah. He's, like, done. Like, I don't see him playing at least in the first few games. No, and so that's, that leaves Girardi, and I think they're pairing Girardi and Stahl up against the Crosby line, so. And they're good. They're pretty underrated defense. I'll say that. I said before, I like the Rangers defense. But they're above and beyond. It's their leader. It's Ryan McDonough. And he's their ace in the hole. And if they don't have him, it's a big hole to fill. Yeah, so. and King King Hank can steal a game no problem. And he has yeah. from the Penguins before. This he can their... steal two games, but I don't think he can steal more than two games. No, and the Rangers are, I don't think, good enough five-on-five five to yeah. to compete with the Penguins for seven, seven straight, so... 
All right. So how you say Pittsburgh, obviously, how many games? Pittsburgh in five. I'm going five yep. games. I think that's the same here. Pittsburgh five, maybe six. I was thinking about I'm going to go with five as well. Yeah, I think they'll lose one at, at the Rangers in Madison Square. Yeah. So. I was thinking Lundqvist might steal one or two. So there you go. Pittsburgh's going to the next round. Dallas. They are in the Western Conference, and we are starting with them in the Central. C1, the leaders of the Western Conference, Dallas Stars, versus... That would be Wild Card 2, right, Paul? That is Wild Card 2, yeah. All right, so they're playing the Minnesota Wild. How can the Wild play well against the Stars? They can't. They they lost Zach Breeze. He's done with the back injury. He's done. I think... I think they can play a good defensive game and pull some wins out. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? The Dallas Stars are a pretty bad defensive team. Yeah, but their they're goal off. Tending, their goaltending is, would you say, maybe the weakest in the entire playoffs? Uh, yeah, Dallas? probably. Yeah they, they, yeah, yeah, they probably are. They probably have the weakest goaltending in the whole entire playoffs. And I'm including Thomas Grice, right? Oh, jeez. I didn't even think of Thomas Grice. No, Thomas Grice is the worst. Thomas Grice is still better, in my opinion, at least this season. The only thing is, do they do they have the faith in, in Grice? And I don't think the Islanders team does have the faith. But then you go to the Dallas Stars and Niemi and Lettinen. It's a toss-up. They both haven't been that good this year. Their defense isn't the greatest. So I think the Wild will win a few games in this series. I'm still picking Dallas. But I think the Wild could take them. They could actually win this series. It's a possibility. But I'm going to go with Dallas in six. All right, I'm going uh, with Dallas the... has just too many offensive weapons. Oh, yeah, their offense is a buzzsaw. They're they're just going to run all over the Wild, I think. As much and as the is... Wild can play defensively, the Dallas Stars are just... They're dangerous. They got is... two solid lines of killers. Is their uh, pairing of Ben and Sagan a problem now? Because... Is Sagan out? I, is he available for game one? That's a question mark. Yeah, I'm not really sure he's day-to-day, so I don't know if he will start the first game. But Yeah, they haven't said that he's available for the first game, and I don't think he will be. I think they're going to take Minnesota a little lightly here and maybe not play Sagan a game or two, and he might, and because he might not be 100%. And that could cost them a bit. You don't know. They still have great depth, especially in scoring. You got Spezza, uh, Goligoski, the list goes on. A veteran in Patrick Sharp. It's too many offensive weapons, though. So, well, how many? Th- Go ahead. Talking about the the tandem goaltending that they decided to set up at the beginning of the year with Niemi and Lettinen, the last seven Cup winners, yep. six of them have used one goalie the entire series. The only one was, I think, Chicago last year with Darling and Crawford. Darling. Yeah, six so of the last seven. I believe six of the last seven, yes. There you go, folks. That's so, a good call. Paul just gave you a good tip and hints. If you're picking teams to go far, you want to go, you have a better chance with going with a team that has a pure A1, 1A goalie. Yeah, because there, there's a lot of teams that we've talked about that have two, that it's up in the air. Well, it's more in the Western Conference, but yeah. 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 Um, so who, what are you calling in this series then? Dallas in five. Dallas five. I got yeah. Dallas in six. All right. Let's go to into the tough matchup. The one that St. Louis always kind of is against, against the Hawks. It's Central two, St. Louis Blues versus Central three, the Chicago Blackhawks, the previous last year's Stanley Cup champions. Is there a way the Blues can win this series, Paul? Oh, yeah. If, yeah. they st- if they steal game one because Keith is out for the first game, yep. if they have depth scoring, like Which two they to don't three. In the playoffs. Yeah, they but. They have depth scoring with guys that can score 15, 20 goals a season. But when it comes to the playoffs, their offense disappears. It's only Tarasenko that can really supply their offense. And that's always been their crutch for them to and their excuses is that they couldn't score enough. Well, see, you got to get the monkey off the back. 
Troy Brower yeah. coming in is a, a big playoff producer, so... Backus might not even be able... To, he's day-to-day, so he might not even play to start the series. And that's that's a big veteran presence in their lineup. Yeah. Especially I, in the rivalry that is the Blackhawks and Blues. And Back, uh, Backus has always right been in the middle of it. You know who so. I think is going to have a great series this series? It's Colton Pareko. Yeah. He he's has no... At all, so. And he has no experience of losing in the playoffs. He's got no mindset of, no, we can't do it, unlike yep. Petrangelo and Shattenkirk. And I think he's going to ride that high and help out the rest of the Blues' defensive core. I think Pareko's going to have a good series. Well, it's it's either he's going to have a good one or a bad one because he's a young guy and it's his first playoff year, uh, run. So, And the Hawks just have so much scoring depth. Um Who's your X factor scorer on the Blackhawks ball? Uh, I think if Hosa, if Hosa has a good series, he's still day to day. It's a it's a grind for him. Yeah, right now so, I don't know even. Uh, it's, it's 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 he's a question mark in my opinion. Yeah, he's well. Yeah, I guess he could be considered an X factor. Yeah, um, if he if he plays and has a a solid series, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people that steal him at the end of playoff pools because yeah. everybody thinks he's hurt. Nobody thinks he's going to do much. He's yep. well known for being the defensive guy, but he's still playing with Taves. So. Yeah. I, I I was going to pick Taravainen, but I'm, I'm going to go with Andrew Ladd as my X Factor, you know, sleeper pick. Nice. Andrew Shaw could, ha- could have a good series, too. Yeah. I don't know how, off, how much they're going to play him in the top, or, top yeah. lines more yeah. ice time, so. Yeah, I wouldn't, like, in my, in my pool that Paul's all, also in. We have an enforcer, and I don't know if Shaw's a great pick this year because he might not be getting the big minutes, and you need a lot of minutes to make a lot of foolish things on the ice happen, right? Yeah. So, so Paul, what do you call for this series? I'm going the Blues in six. Wow, in six? Yep. Well, I hope you're right because I'm a Blues fan, but I'm just going to go and stick with the favorite, and I'm going to the limit with the Hawks in seven. Wow think the blues can take them deep but in the end the hawks have a lot of experience so but yeah i hope the blues do win that would be great all right let's go to the pacific pacific team one the anaheim ducks versus wild card spot one the nashville predators the preds are my other underdog team a lot of people actually are questioning the ducks now because they're facing against a good defensive team could the Ducks lose this series, Paul? Uh, I I don't see it. Yeah, they're playing way too good at hockey. Their mm-hmm. their special teams are the the best, almost the best in the league. Like they're, I think their power play is the best, but they they have such a good team. They're they're deep. Kessler in the second line is ridiculous. Yeah, he's he's such a playoff performer that I think they're gonna get through Nashville. No, no issues. Yeah, Nashville's still kind of a young team, unexperienced team, inexperienced team. Like they, they have a solid defense core, but beyond Weber and Yossi, do they have much playoff experience? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess not. Not so much. Um, they're a very good defensive team, though. So I think they could maybe steal a game or two. Uh, but the Ducks actually have some injuries. Votnin might not play. That he's still a question mark for Game One, right? And yep. Perron, he might not play a couple of games or more the whole entire series. Yeah, and he was a very good addition for them, and a big reason why they were playing really well in that second half of the season. Yeah, so they've got a few injuries. The Ducks, um, but it's hard to not be able to not pick the Ducks. When you have guys like Getzoff and Perry, yeah, they're they're just playoff studs. So yeah, I got the I got the Ducks in six. I have taken the Ducks in five. Perfect. And the last series is Pacific team number two, the L.A. Kings versus Pacific team number three, the San Jose Sharks. The San Jose Sharks have never really done well in the playoffs. It might be another year of that because the Kings are 
they're a very good playoff team. And now they've added a good piece in Milan Lucic, who's done fairly well. I was actually surprised how well he's done this year with the Kings. I didn't know how he me- was going to mesh well, but apparently he fits in just right. Yeah, he's a Western-built boy. He just he was built for the Western Hockey League. Yeah. yeah. So, how is there a way the Sharks can win the series? I still think there's a chance, but the Kings are the Kings are dominant and they're a great playoff team. They could pull out the Stanley Cup win with cups in every other year, right? If they win. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm I'm saying the Sharks are winning this series. So well, you are picking the Sharks. The pair right? the pair of Joes are going to have great great series this series. So wow. Um, and Brent, and picking... Brent Brent Burns on the back end is just he is a game changer big time. So I'm taking. I've been watching it. more San Jose Sharks games lately, and I didn't know how dominant Burns is on the ice. He's like an ogre version of like a Crosby almost. Yeah, he's he's everywhere on the ice. He shoots a ton. He was second in the league in shots with over 350 shots, I think it was. He, he's breaking ankles with his... He's he's really good at turning on the ice. Yeah. He's very shifty for a bigger guy. He's really good. I, 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 like, I knew he was great, but I didn't know he was like this good. He is really good. So, it, I, you know what, in my opinion, it's going to be a very close series. Um, I like... The Kings, the way they play in the two-way game, they're a very good defensive team, and they usually capitalize on scoring chances. I don't see that changing in the series, so I am picking the Kings in seven. And you got, what, Sharks in? Six. Six. All right. We've done the first round. Let's go to the second round then, right? Yep. Uh, So... We both picked the Florida Panthers to make it second round, and we both picked the Detroit Red Wings, right? Yeah. So who would win between the Florida Panthers and Detroit Red Wings? I'm going with the Panthers. Yep. They're they got such an easy bracket. They're they're going to be so fresh going into the conference finals if and when they make it. Yep. I'm going with the Panthers to make it to the conference finals. Perfect. Folks, if you're listening out there, we're not going to talk too much about the series now because we don't know. We're going to leave that to two weeks from now when we get to the second round, but we're going to just break down the bracket, what we thought. And I'm also picking the Florida Panthers to beat the Red Wings in six games in the second round. We go to the Atlantic division bracket and you pick the Flyers. Yep. I pick the Caps and we both pick the Penguins. So I'm picking the Caps to beat out the Penguins in seven and what did you pick out of Philly and Pittsburgh? I got That's Pittsburgh. That's the rivalry that you love. Oh, yeah. It's going to be – that will be a great series, second round. Pittsburgh's yep. going to take it. They have outplayed Philadelphia all year. So didn't didn't pick games for the second and, and final rounds. But, yeah, I'm taking Pittsburgh to go to the conference finals to play the Panthers. Perfect. And let's finish off that side of the bracket. And I've got Florida Panthers versus the Capitals. I'm picking Capitals – they have way too many weapons, and they're going to the finals in five games versus the Panthers. And what do you got for Panthers versus Penguins? Taking my Penguins, going to the finals. Perfect. All right, and then we go to the West. We both picked Dallas, but we flip-flopped on St. Louis and Chicago. I'm picking Chicago to edge Dallas barely in seven games, and Chicago's going to the conference finals. You got... The Stars versus the Blues. Who do you got in the second round? Stars going to the finals. Their offensive buzzsaw is going to keep on rolling. Perfect. You get the Stars going to the conference finals. Then we go to the Pacific. We both picked Ducks. We flip-flopped on the Kings and the Sharks. I'm going with the Ducks again to beat the Kings in six games. What did you pick out of the Sharks versus your Ducks? I am going to take the Ducks. They are just... Too good of a team to not... Yeah, the Ducks are just going to be much better than the Sharks, I believe. So I think the Ducks are going to the Conference Finals to face the Stars. Perfect. And what do you have between the Stars and the Ducks? The Dallas Stars going to the Finals. 
you're picking the Dallas Stars to go right to the Stanley Cup Finals, eh? Yeah. Wow. I don't know if they have that in them just because they're kind of fresh. They've got a few vets, though, which is good, but I don't know, and they're goaltending, too. So I'm going to go with the Ducks beating the Blackhawks and the Ducks going to the Stanley Cup playoff finals. And then the matchups we have are you got Pittsburgh, right? Yep. Versus the Stars. Who do you think is going to win out of those two? This is going to go to the Penguins, just like it did in 1991 with the Minnesota North Stars facing the Pittsburgh Penguins. Going to be a classic, classic rematch. A lot of offense, though. That would be a cool series to watch, that's for sure. Exactly. And I'm sticking with the Dallas Stars can't win because they got... They're going to use two goalies. I I really do think they're going to use two goalies. Right in the end. Right in the end. Yeah. All right. Uh, I got the Ducks versus the Capitals. And it's a toss-up for me. You know what? In the finals. Um, can Ovi get a cup? I'm going, eh, and I'm picking the Ducks to win the cup this year. I kind of had the Ducks at the beginning of the season to do all well this year, as I was saying earlier uh, and I'm still going to go with them. I still feel the Ducks can pull off the cup for this year. That's it. That's what we picked. All right, and we, you know what? We're going to post our picks on the Facebook group for Jablam Hockey. All right, let's get into the second part of our show, and we're going to talk about our picks for fantasy drafts for the playoffs. But as I was talking to you before, right, Paul? We I got my own fantasy playoff pool, right? Yep. And we already did some groups yesterday. It was pretty wild. Some guys were insane. One guy decided to go everybody Tampa, and he obviously he forgot that Stamkos is not playing. So he picked Stamkos as the second pick after he decided to go with Bishop in the first round. So that was crazy. That was ridiculous. I was like, Nemestikov is not going to get, like, 15 points, even if Tampa goes far. So I don't know why you're picking him. Uh, so that was hilarious. Uh, but even better was our pal, Eric. Eric, you out there? I hope you're listening to this. So I could tell instantly he, he like he goes on and we're all making our picks. And he did some pretty good picks. I think he he was he was doing really well at the beginning. He picked like Kane with his first pick, Jamie Ben with the second pick. Right? And I was like, ah, oh, he's picking pretty well for a bit of a, a newbie, right? With especially with playoff pool. And Shout out to Hometown Hockey. Eric works for them. And if you guys are listening, there you go. Um, so then it started getting in the middle. And then he's like, I want Nikita. And I'm like, Nikita? And I'm trying to guess here. I'm putting him. I was it? Is it Nikita Jaredev? Uh, who? Is it Zaitsev in, in the KHL? Who's he picking? And I'm like, I'm, I'm racking my brain. I'm like, oh, Kucherov. Is it Kucherov? And he's like, yeah, yeah, that guy. I'm like, oh, okay, good. And I'm trying, like, people are picking, they're making their picks. They're telling me they want Seabrook, a defenseman from Chicago. He's telling me with his next pick, he wants Philpa Dil- Philpa Dilpa, Paul. He wanted Philpa Dilpa. Do you know who that is? Val- Valtteri Philpula? Yeah, you're right. But some people might not guess that. He said Philpa Dilpa. Maybe that's his new nickname. Wow. <laughs> I've never heard that before, but just here in Philpula, I couldn't think of anybody else. Yeah, yeah. I was like, is there not? Is that supposed to be Philip Dupuis? What? No, he's not there anymore. What? Anyways, so then I figured that one out after like a minute. Uh, and then, as we got to the last two rounds, p- people are drafting. It's their turn. He starts throwing out names. In the middle of the pool, he told us, oh, I, my battery's at like 12%, right? And we're like, okay, okay. And then every two, three minutes, he's like, my battery's at 7%. My battery's at 5%. He's telling us, we're like, okay, relax. <laughs> and then he starts throwing out names while other people are drafting. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, oh, it was ridiculous. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was like, Brent Burns. Uh, and it was hilarious. I could see him just like, whatever, like, just like, whatever. And I could obviously tell he must be at a bar and had a little too many few drinks. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad he's in the the rookies group that you yeah. have put him in. That's so. what happens, Paul. When you're drafting, doing the draft between like the All Star group, they they did their draft yesterday. 
they, they did it in like under 30 minutes. Wow. The whole 10 picks each, five guys, 50 picks. It was, I think it was like 28 minutes. The pylons, and Eric wasn't in that group though. He was in rookies, obviously, because he's a rookie. Pylons of Garris, they're the guys that are at the bottom at the end. They're not sure with their picks. Those guys took over an hour to do their draft. Jeez. And the rookies were in the middle somewhere. They were about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. And it probably would have done a lot sooner had we not had Eric making some uh, little tipsy picks. So it was hilarious. And he's just shouting out, and I didn't know who to pick for his enforcer. But he named, like, three different enforcers in the last round. So I just picked the first one that he said that nobody else had taken. He was they, he was naming guys that were half were taken, half were still available. It was hilarious. I was dying. I like I was I was I was kind of like trying to be serious because I'm commissioning the draft, but at the same time in the back of my head I'm like this is hilarious. This guy's from... <laughs> I wish that happened last year when I was in the rookies group. Man. Yeah. No, that was more more standard. All right. So, for your picks Paul, like, what are your thoughts, and how do you like to do your draft? So, I kind of like to fill up my bracket and then find out players from there and pick the top players. But then I kind of see and listen. Like, I I know you have a lot of the buddies that you talk to, and you've kind of talked about, like, who's who's the hot team. Like, the Capitals obviously are the hot team, and, like, Chicago's the hot team. But I got down to my bracket and I take the four teams that I have in the conference finals because I expect them to be playing the most games. Yep. So then I go from there and I take basically the top guys from those teams. Uh, yep. I'm probably not going to be drafting Crosby, even though I think the Penguins are going to win, just because I think he's going to be going in the first round. And and who are you going to take ahead of him? Are you I, think I, take... I think I'll take Ben. Oh, yeah, you're going to take because you like Dallas to go far. Yeah, right. so you're taking a Ben. I'm in the first round. I'm 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 th- I'm thinking the same thing as you. I like to fill up my bracket, kind of know where I'm going with this, but I like to have backup teams because all the teams I pretty much pick are all pretty much favorites, right? So if everybody starts taking all my ducks, Perry, Gestoff, and they already take maybe Kester by the third round, then I'm like, why do I want to have? Silverberg, you yeah, know? Yeah. Am I going to take Silverberg? Am I only going to have one or two ducks at the end? I kind of don't want to. So I might lean on picking my fifth or sixth team by still being able to get one of their top or two of their top three players if they're available. And I like to do that. I like to change it up on the fly if I need to. It sucks that you don't get to pick your favorite teams or your favorite players. But sometimes that goes with that. And the same same thing goes with my first pick. I really want to take Holby because I like the Capitals. I like them to go far. And a lot of my other teams, like the Ducks, have a tandem goaltender. And I don't know who they're going to play. So I have to lean on taking my number one goalie because my other two teams, I'm not too sure about. Right? If yeah. I'm picking uh, Dallas or I'm picking the Ducks, they both have tandems. So I might lean on taking Holpe first round because I know he's going to be gone no matter what by the end of the first round or mid second round. So I got to lean on going, trying to get him and then maybe recouping and getting some of the top players in the other teams. So, so you're going to go Holpe first round probably. Yeah. Holpe first round. If I can, if I can't, man, that's going to be tough and that's really going to bother me. And then I might have to go with another capital forward or a ducks forward. Um, Yeah. And then, how do you go down your your selections, Paul? Like, if, when you get to that fourth or fifth round, what do you start thinking? Uh, well, I'm not picking a goalie until probably third last pick. Okay. Unless there's other teams. Well, it's different with our league because there's only five guys that I'm competing against. So. Yeah, it's not very deep. Yeah. So there's I, I picked five goalies that I am comfortable taking. Mm-hmm. And then I will see where guy like if guys pick four goalies right away then i don't need to waste my goalie pick exactly. until the very end yep and you can yep. pick an enforcer before that because i know i got a fifth yep. goalie that i really like yeah uh i actually only have three written down right now i got flurry mm-hmm. flurry luongo and gibson and i'll probably take a gamble on a star if those three guys go yeah but i don't know which star i want to take yet mm-hmm 
so I'm not picking a goalie any time any yeah. in early rounds. Defenseman I'm not taking early because again I've found five that I like. Mm-hmm. But but if you like the Blackhawks, right? You can how take can it. You not pick Duncan Keith early. I think you have to because if you wait too long, he'll be gone. Yeah, this is true. Right? And he's that much of a stud that you have to. He'll recoup a lot of points for you. But if you're picking a defenseman from, say, the Stars, yeah, you're pretty safe to bet that he probably won't be taken in the first six rounds. Five, yeah, six but rounds, right? so say I like Penguins. So yeah. would I take a Latang over a Sagan or a Perry or a Getzlaff? You know what? In, in the second opinion, or third round? I like Latang more as a player than a defenseman because in my pool, like you can pick him as well as a player uh, just because he puts up way more points and his plus minus is never the greatest. Yeah. So I guess we should, we should uh, kind of figure out. uh, So the forwards get a point for a goal and a point for an assist. Yep. And you can have, well, they're not forwards, they're skaters. Any player. Yep. Yeah. You can have seven skaters and then you get one defenseman that, accumulates plus minus as well as points as points so but the players they get points for yeah again goals assists but extra points for game winners and overtime winners yeah and i think i forgot about that defenseman as a skater last year i think i'm going to use that a little little better this year so maybe i will go maybe i will take like letang in the third round yes why not take letang twice yeah take him as a player and if he's still available as a defenseman in the seventh round, take him as a defenseman as well. Why not? Yeah. You know, I was lo- I, I was loving it uh, when the uh, Bruins were playing well. And my buddy, I think Mark, shout out to Mark, he took Chara as a player, picking up some points, as a defenseman, picking up points and plus minus. And in my pool as well, we got the rule, and I love it, the X factor, the enforcer. And Chara's going to get you some penalty minutes. So it's great. Uh, Enforcer-wise, Paul, if you were to pick one or two, who are your favorites? Uh, Roussel is going to be my number right. one. He's your number one. That's a great pick. I, th- I think he's going to be a hidden pick. I don't think uh, mm. he's going to be well-known. Like, people yeah. know him, but I don't think they're going to think of it. Yeah. Like, the third last round is probably when I'll take an Enforcer because I'm going to get a goalie at the very end. So Yeah. And you know what? People are already leaning on him, and it's my pick, too, and I like him. Tom Wilson. He's a Perfect pick. Yeah, he, if you if you got the Capitals going deep, yeah, Wilson is is an excellent pick. Mm. Uh, another guy that I have, just because like Penguins don't really have a penalty minute yep. guy, like yeah, yeah, the don't. Panthers Panthers don't really have penalty minute guy, and those are my two Eastern Conference. I might look at Wayne Simmons because I think Flyers yes. are gonna if That's they beat the point. Capitals, they're gonna beat the crap out of them. So, but the, and the other thing though, and this is why I love the first round. Most of the penalty minutes are in the first round, folks. Yeah. So even if you think you have a slight edge with a team maybe going to the second round, picking a good enforcer or even a great first line player on a team that might just go second round is still a good idea than picking a, a fifth guy or sixth guy on a team that you might think might go far. Yeah. And yeah. So this is a good pick for Philly. And having a superstar on certain teams that you still think might not go far, but might go one or two rounds is always a good move as well. Yeah. And Simmons, uh, his two matchups are going to be the Capitals or, and then if they win, they're playing Penguins or Rangers. So they're all big rivalries. And yeah, lots of penalty minutes are going to be balled up there. Yeah. Um, Like, like I was saying, like Tarasenko has to be picked in every pool. Even if you think St. Louis might not be the Blackhawks, they could, they could beat the Blackhawks. But no matter what, Tarasenko will still get a lot of points in the first round. Yeah. So he's a great pick. If he's not taken in the first few rounds, I recommend him to almost anybody taking him by the middle of your draft or whenever. If he's available later, he's golden. Yeah. He's going to be much better than taking that fifth guy on your Stanley Cup team. Yeah, he's got to be a top 20 guy in yeah. any draft. If you have a 10-team or 12-team or 15-team, like... He's he's a top twenty guy, yeah. And who's your one or two sleeper picks that you have all down there? Uh, Kessel is going to be nice sleeper pick. He's almost great. a point per game in the playoffs when he does play in the playoffs. So yeah, he is. He was great for Leaves that he's, year. Yeah, and he's having a good 
last 15, 20 games, oh, he's, he's on, fire. on fire. Uh, so, yeah, he's a, a dark horse. And I think a couple of the Sharks are going to be forgotten about. Like Pavelski. Yeah, could be. Yep. Pavelski might Burns. be forgotten about. Yeah, Burns might be forgotten about. And even Big Joe. I think I think I want Burns as a skater and not plus minus. His plus yeah. minus is not good. Not good, especially for him. Yeah, you don't want him. And you know what? I'm going to tell you my sleeper pick because I like the Panthers to maybe go deep. So if I don't get a good defenseman like a John Carlson, right, or like a Duncan Keith, why not Brian Campbell? Oh, on wow. The Florida Panthers. Wow. There you go, Paul. I just told you. I hope nobody from my pool for tonight is listening. But that's my sleeper hidden pick, Brian Campbell. And when, when because, and this is why I like to do this, Paul. I like to take a second pairing defenseman who has a good plus minus. You know why? Because they play against the other line on the other team. They don't play against the top line. They play against the second line. And usually that helps a lot making it either tra- easier transition, getting out of the defensive zone, and as well helping you out with points and plus minus. And Brian Campbell plays on the second pairing, and I think this is a great pick if I don't get a good guy like a Keith. Interesting. That's, yeah. I'm going to put him on my list. I had <laughs> I had Ekblad as my defenseman from the Panthers if yeah, I all know. else fails. I shouldn't have told you. You might take him now. You're not in my group. Uh, I was Because I was thinking about maybe Ekblad, and he's great. But I was thinking, mate, and I've done really well before with taking my sleeper picks. Last year, who did I take, Paul? I took Yandel. Oh, yeah. And, and what happened? He ended up having about five, six points more than Ryan McDonough. It happens, yeah. Paul. I've done, I helped my dad once. Duncan Keith was taken. Everybody's taken Seabrook. What did my dad do? Took Michael Roosevelt. And he ended up having a pretty good, decent playoff run the previous year. So, it's not always the top guy that's always the best choice. Maybe it's a, a guy that will fit in nicely, well in a set, in that in that depth lineup, like on the Ducks. You never know a Silverberg or a McGinn might be a better pick than certain other players if you think the Ducks are going to go really far. So, I have Brian Campbell on there, and let me take a look at my list that I wrote. Where is it? I lost my list, Paul. I lost my list. Because you got everybody else's list there. That are no, no, they draft. emailed it to me, so I, I got to look through the internet and stuff. But I can't, now I can't find it. Now this is going to bother me. So I, I can't remember my other sleeper picks right now. <laughs> oh, well. I will tell you them more uh, next episode. I've got a few more guys that I think they're going to be game breaker type guys as well. And yeah, next round we'll, we'll, we'll talk about more, more matchups. And the next episode, we're going to go right into the series and the matchups that are going on in the playoffs. Right? That's pretty much it for this episode, right, Paul? Yeah, I don't got anything else to say. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. All right, so we'll catch you out there next episode. I hope you liked it. And again, check out JablamHockey.com. Our episodes are all on there. We've got team episodes. We've got a few more to do. We're going to try to do them in the next few episodes. And go on Facebook. we got our Jablam Hockey on Facebook there. And we're going to break down and put on our brackets on there in the next few days. All right. See you next episode, guys. Have fun in the playoffs watching. Bye.